Hey, what's up everyone? Sam in the studio here and had another video that I wanted to share with you and it's got a little story to it and hopefully it has little learning points along the way too. Just about how some of this stuff works and happens and maybe my testimony could be a little bit of guidance if you're interested in getting into these things. Once again, please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel Subscribe down below. You can hit the little bell icon for notifications. Always helps out a ton. So, today I want to share with you a little bit about how I got to score a movie trailer, right? I mean, isn't that like, uh, would be the dream to be able to have your music behind an epic movie trailer. So, this was something that kind of came about in a very interesting way. So, I'm just going to give you the story because I think it has a couple of good takeaways. So, how did this all start? Um, Funny, it almost happened by accident. <laughs> so what happened was, so one day I went to look for a trailer house online, look for their website. It's a trailer house that I had taken a class, a college level class on filmmaking. I got a degree online from UCLA on in film. And in one of those classes on film, there was a professor teaching the class who had a connection to a trailer house and he had interviewed a guy. Well, this is a couple years ago. Well, I had emailed that guy and he had emailed me back, but it was years ago and along the shuffle of things, I had just lost contact and I couldn't find where the email was. So I went online to look for this trailer house that I had made a connection with, thought, oh, maybe the guy will remember me. And a funny thing happened was I landed on the wrong website. And when I landed on this website, I was just about to click off of it, but something caught my eye. And that was the location of this trailer house. It was very close to me. In fact, when I put that address into my phone, it was only a couple of miles away from me. I thought, that's crazy. There's a trailer house here. Like, I do live in Southern California, but I don't live in LA, in the heart of LA. So I'm kind of on the outskirts, on the outside. So for there to be a trailer house a couple of miles away from me, I thought, whoa, that's crazy. So I thought, I don't know, I'll reach out to this trailer house while I'm at it too. So I sent the guy at that trailer house an email, just introducing myself and saying, hey, this is crazy, but I live around the corner from you and would love looking at your site. I love what you're doing and working on and would love to see if I could be any assistance to you. So a couple weeks go by and I didn't get an email back. I actually didn't get an email back from either of the two trailer houses that I emailed. Um, a couple weeks went by and then uh, one day, uh, two, three, four weeks later, I did get an email back from the one close to my house and the guy said, oh crazy, thanks for reaching out to me and also gave me his phone number, his cell number. So I texted his cell number with my cell number just to make a link in contact and as we were doing that back and forth, I kind of just asked him what brought you to Whittier, to like a place that's like close by me. And so all that to say, we went back and forth, um, what schools our kids go to, where are good places to eat around here, because he was a little bit newer to this area. He, he used to be in Hollywood and he kind of upped and moved his operation um, outside of LA because he was just tired of uh, being in the hustle and bustle and the traffic and all that kind of stuff. So hey, who knew, you know? and. As we were emailing back and forth and kind of building something, uh, it came to a point where I felt like this is a good moment in this kind of building this new connection and uh, relationship. And I just said, hey, uh, I have a couple days where I don't have anything lined up. You don't happen to have any work or anything you need done. Almost instantly, within the next five or 10 minutes, he uh, texted me back and then we ended up talking on the phone and he said, I do, I have a movie trailer and it has what's called temp music kind of lined up, but I'm not sure, he said, I'm not sure that's what the music that's gonna stick all the way to the end. He said, if you wanna take a crack or a stab at like kind of replacing that music, um, I would be down for that. And so I was like, yes, there it is right there. And again, all of this story hopefully doesn't sound too much like just one big humble brag. It really is so much about relationships. And 
Um, so I got this trailer. Um, I had to sign an NDA non-disclosure agreement um, because it was a trailer that wasn't out yet. And so I, he sent it to me in pieces. So I had the voiceover, had the cool, it was, it's an action movie. So it has a cool voiceover. It had some music, some of it I heard and I was like, oh, I know I can do that and replace that. Some of it sounded a little bit trickier, like some good action music that had strings and drums and different things. Um, but previously I had taken a course from that online UCLA extension program that was on scoring music for video games. And I learned so much in that class. That class was really a way that forced me into kind of programming and thinking in terms of scoring. And I also for that class bought some plugins and some virtual instruments that had more of a symphonic or scoring type capability. So I felt a little bit prepared at the same time I will be straight honest, hopefully transparent with you to say that there was a kind of a oh shoot moment and a little bit of fake until you make it moment because as I was starting to build up tracks and build a score for this movie trailer, there was moments where I thought, oh, can I do this? I mean, your self doubt will always be there. It comes in for like the best of us. You're gonna have those moments. And I kept kind of pushing that voice out of my head and just trying harder, listening, concentrating. What could I do to do something interesting that could fit? So here's how the story ended. The first round of what I sent him, he put underneath and sent it to the client and their comment back was, what happened to the music on this? Oh no, wah, wah. It was like, ah, oh, great. They did not super love it. And at that point, I was, ah, oh, maybe I lost this. Maybe it's something I can't do, you know, all those type of things. But what was awesome was the guy at the trailer house on the other end of it, you know, he's just like a human, like the rest of us. And one thing he said to me was, you know, you know, they, they don't like it, but uh, you know, you gotta have thick skin in this whole game. And it's so true. He said, do you wanna take another crack at it then? And I said, yes, let me try again. And the moral of that story is, and I say again, not to boast on myself, but it's something that I would hope and encourage you guys to do too, is don't let the first couple rounds of it's not it be it. You can push through those things. And a little bit inside of me wanted to just say, uh, you know, you probably have some professional scoring guys that will, you know, kill it. And maybe they just give it to someone else. But I said, ah, let, let me try again. So I came back in here, scrapped everything I had, completely redid the whole thing from scratch. As I was working on that, I was getting a better sense. Some of it was feeling better. Some of it was sliding in. And another thing that I would highly make you aware of if you're interested in working in trailer music is that these trailers, like I said, are edited to a lot of times temp music. And here's the thing about that is that the client is seeing trailers many times with temp music in there and it becomes a little bit of a psychological game. It's a little bit of a head game. So something that you have to think of as a composer is what have they been listening to in the last months as they've been seeing this trailer. And if you stray too far from that or try to outdo that or underdo it or whatever the case may be, you might find yourself like I did in the situation of my first round where they said, what happened to the music? So what I learned from that was I listened even more carefully to the temp music that was there and if it had strings going dun 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 dun, I put some strings going dun 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 dun. <laughs> and if it had drums that were bombastic and hits bum 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 bum, I went and kind of put some similar hits in there. Uh, so I hope this was an encouragement to you. Uh, a little bit of don't give up and keep trying. A little bit of relationships and try to make those connections and just reach out. It's really just meeting a need. Someone's cutting a trailer and they have a need for music. So Sam in the studio. And thanks for watching, subscribe to my channel, and peace out everyone.